I want to get to one of my favorite traders, and that is Dennis Gartman. Uh, BHP Billiton is trying to become the world's biggest fertilizer producer by making that $40 billion hostile takeover bid for potash. Dennis, so much talk about what this says about global food supply and constraint on that. That gets me to the commodity space where, where you started out. Tell me on this yep. run-up in corn, in wheat, how much more of a run are we going to see on these fronts? You know, actually, Margaret, I, I think we've only just begun. A, a great good deal will depend upon whether we actually get rain in Russia, in Kazakhstan, in, in, in the eastern parts of, of, of Europe, where we're getting ready to put the winter wheat crop again in for the next year. And quite honestly, if we don't get rain, and I mean good rain in the next several weeks, we may have a problem going into next year's crop <clears throat> for American farmers. This is going to be the best several years that they've ever had. I mean, they're going to be seeing high prices for corn, high prices for wheat, high prices for soybeans. I just don't think this problem is going to go away. And just a few minutes ago, your, your piece on Pakistan, where these devastating floods have occurred, have done damage to the cotton crop there, have done damage to the grain crops there. We're, we're having weather problems all over the world except for the grain producing regions here in North America. And this is going to be a great several years for us, but I think, it's, I think this grain problem is something that's going to be on our uh, radar screens for not just two months, not three months, but perhaps a year or more. And what, a 40% run up in corn and soybeans since June? I mean, just a, a tremendous yeah. uh, increase. But talk to me about the other way to play this and, and betting on those commodity producing nations and their currencies. Are you staying in that long position in the Canadian? Canadian dollar. What are you thinking about Australia and its currency? Well, actually, in, in, in my ETF and in the hedge fund, I, I have, I'm long the Canadian dollar. I'm short the euro. I'm long the New, the New Zealand dollar. I'm short the euro. I'm long the Australian dollar. I'm short the euro. I think that's abundantly clear that these are the countries that are going to ser be served very, very well. Canada finds itself, Australia finds itself in, in the proverbial catbird seat. They are the producers and they are the purveyors. They are the sellers of, of exportable commodities, not just food, but copper, natural gas, crude oil uh, to put it in the parlance of the public they have stuff and the world needs <laughs> stuff and more importantly they need the world needs food at this point uh, they are very good producers and we are a, a, still the best producer of food in the world but the, the people at the margin who are going to be served the best by this are going to be New Zealand Australia and Canada no question we haven't seen interest rates on Treasury bonds like this since what 1950s Jeremy Siegel out there today talking about what he sees as a bubble in bonds are we in a bubble? And if so, what's going to pop that? I'm not sure that it is a bubble at all. I think that this is a tectonic plate shift that has occurred. The savings rate in the United States may only be 5 or 6% in aggregate, but I think the savings rate amongst people my, in, in, in my age group, the, the 58s to 65-year-olds, uh, is probably plus 15%. Uh, we have been burned, or they have been burned, by the, <coughs> the problems in their 401ks. Uh, and as Mark Twain said, the cat that sits upon a hot stove shall not sit upon a hot stove again, nor upon a cold one either. They're going to continue to be reticent about investing in equities and they're going to continue to be uh, supportive of, of owning the safest of all uh, investments, mm -hmm. Treasury securities. So yes, it's amazing that we are here at these rates, but do I actually think this is a bubble? No, I think this is a tectonic plate shift towards savings and safety. You say tectonic plate shift. We just uh, broke that story about Stan Druckenmiller, you know, stepping down from his fund. He's known yeah. for making macro bets. Can that model continue? I mean, how do you make macro bets if one of the best traders of all time says he's he's thrown in the towel at this point? It's too uh, it's too much. Well, I, I, I I'm not sure that Stan's thrown in the towel as much as he's probably just said, look, I'm 58 years old. I've made several billions of dollars. Fair point. What more can I do? And the golf course is beckoning. I think there's going to be plenty of, of trades to be done in global macro over the course yeah. of the next 15 years. I just think well, Stan we'll says I want to go play golf. We'll check in with you about those, Dennis. Thanks.